police and them were police officers testifying against somebody like me, you know what I'm saying? I was just a low life dog and, and, and a low life criminal, right? And so, uh, and so when the jury seen this, you seen this low life criminal compared to these dedicated police officers testifying, who you don't believe? You don't believe the police officers. <laughs> I'm responsible for getting the wrong reaction. I'm responsible for fleeing. I'm responsible for being part of his death. I'm, I'm responsible for his death. That's what I'm responsible for. But I'm not responsible for him intentionally killing him. It was pretty easy to show the motive to the jury after getting all these officers chasing him and fighting with the officers, running them off the road. Here's one laying right in front of him. And he's got the capacity to stop Daniel Lopez with these spike strips. And to me, he was just an officer that was in his way to escape. This isn't a one-time person doing a one-time thing. He's got a track record of other crimes. He had abused women before. He had sold drugs. He had drugs in his car. It was a monumental task for the defense to overcome. I think he firmly believed that he would be found guilty of capital murder in light of the fact that he was a police officer. He analyzed what his life would be like. He did not want to live in a penitentiary for the rest of his life. And the only alternative was death. And from the beginning, consistently, this young man wanted the death penalty. They subpoenaed me to justify He says, Mom, I have to get the death penalty. I have to make sure I get the death penalty. If you go up there and you try to defend me and they give me life, it's going to be on your conscience that I'm going to be suffering living life behind bars. Sorry. The words didn't come out. But now I went up there to testify. I couldn't defend him.